Hey guys, Nate here, and welcome to part two of the Advanced Lightroom series. Today we're gonna to be talking about the four building blocks of style. And these four building blocks are really important and they're very often overlooked in Lightroom courses and Lightroom tutorials. So today I wanna to talk to you about how these four building blocks will help us have a common language in the way that we talk about processing. It will give us the tools that we need to decode and describe any style that we look at and we like. It shows us the ideal editing order. So when we actually go and start making changes in Lightroom, this shows us the, the, the right way that all the pieces fit together. And it shows us which tools to use for the types of effects that you want to get. So what are these four building blocks? Well, the first is the tones. The second is the color cast. The third is the color palette. And the fourth is something that I just call the details. And so we're gonna go through each of these and talk more about them as we go through this, but these are the four building blocks of style and whether you're using Lightroom or uh, Photoshop or any other thing to develop your photos, these are the four essential things that you have to understand. And to demonstrate for this for you, uh, we're gonna take this example. This isn't my photo. This is a photo from a uh, legendary black and white film photographer, Paul Strand. And I'm going to use and show you how to use the four building blocks of style to uh, describe this and actually start to emulate this look and even take it beyond emulation to get some of our own interesting, unique looks. So let's head on over to Lightroom. Okay, and the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the tones. When we start thinking about what areas to look at, you know, I typically start looking at maybe the darkest areas of the image, uh, maybe uh, this this uh, skin right here, and I can actually see the exact measurements uh, right underneath the histogram. And this is a really important tool as we go through the four building blocks of style to, to start to learn and understand. So I can look at, you know, the shadows underneath, uh, underneath her neck, uh, shadows on the skin. I can look at uh, her garment. I can look at maybe some of the mid-tones in her skin. I can look at uh, the, the brightness of the foliage um, and just start to get a numerical sense of, uh, of what the tones are like in this image. And um, I'm not gonna do all of that here. We'll talk more about the tones uh, later, but I just wanna flip over to this other image, put it into black and white, hitting the V key, and start using the tone curve to actually build this out. And now I always start the tone curves from the black point and the white point. These are like the bookends of the tones in the image. And so I establish that first. I'll then uh, take down the shadows, maybe push up the highlights a little bit. And I'm doing all this based off of measurements I've, I've already taken. Uh, from the image that that we'll get into more in the next section when we start talking about tones um, and I already kind of know what I want here so I'm just gonna adjust the highlights a little bit uh, deepen these really dark shadows just a tiny bit and uh, that's starting to look pretty close to what we want now as we've done this I may have blown out the highlights just a tiny bit so I'll pull that back I'll push up the shadows so we get a little bit more detail in there um, I can just make some of these basic tweaks and it's a lot easier to make these after I've made the major tweaks to the tone curve. All right, so next let's talk about the color cast. We may be tempted to think that this is just pure black and white, but actually it's not. We can um, actually look at the RGB measurements and we can see that the red, green, and blue values are not the same. And that means that this is not neutral gray. And so I've already made some measurements uh, off of those and so I have a really clear idea of numerically what this color cast is and I can go ahead and start adding it in using the color curves, the individual RGB curves. And so here I'm just very subtly adjusting uh, the green channel. I'm pushing it up about uh, one percent, one percentage point all the way down in the blacks and then in the midtones. And I'm going to take red and uh, push that up a little bit less than I push the green up. I'm gonna push that up maybe just a percentage point or less. And now I'm gonna take the blue and I'm actually going to remove some blue in the highlights. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to accentuate uh, a little bit of a yellow cast 
in the highlights. Don't worry if this uh, doesn't make sense yet, but yellow is basically the absence of blue. Um, okay, so let's see how we're doing. That was before, this is after, and we're starting to get way closer to the color cast that we want. All right, so let's look at the color palette. I'm just going to make a virtual copy of this hitting command apostrophe and uh, convert it back to color hitting the V key. All right, so all of our changes, everything that we've done with the RGB curve and with the uh, individual color curves have all carried over to this. And uh, now we're going to use the HSL panel to start to shape the color palette a little bit more intentionally. And now in this case, I'm not actually uh, emulating off of anything. There's just a couple of, uh, of effects that I want to achieve with the color. And um, to help with this, I, uh, I have this concept that, that I use, I call uh, goal-based palette design. And um, goal-based palette design just basically breaks down all the different options that you have between the different color channels and uh, between making changes to the hue, saturation, and luminance. And so in this case, just looking at this photo and looking at the skin, um, I, I basically want the skin to, um, to appear less blemished, to appear a little bit more consistent and uh, maybe not quite as saturated, maybe a little bit uh, a little bit more subdued. And so I can look on this uh, goal-based palette design sheet here, and I can look and see the red channel. Uh, if I want to hide some of the blemishes uh, and actually also make it feel kind of classic and aged, I can push the hue to the right. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to push this hue to the right until it feels about right. In this case, it's gonna be about 25. I'm gonna pull down the saturation, which will make it feel even more consistent. And I'm gonna pull down the saturation of the orange just a little bit. Okay, so next, I wanna look at uh, things that are basically competing for attention um, that maybe aren't complementing the, the primary focus of this photo, which is the skin tones. And so I'm gonna look at the blue in the blue jeans here. And I'm going to make a couple of changes. Uh, first, I'm going to take down the saturation. Um, I'm going to take down the luminous a little bit too so that the skin actually feels more luminous by comparison. And that should be pretty good. You can see this is the before, and then this is the after, and it's starting to feel a little bit more organic from where it was previously. All right, so now let's talk about the details. The details are really just a catch-all for all the little things that we can do now uh, that will take our image even further. And we're gonna do a couple different things. I'm gonna show you uh, how to use the adjustment brush, how to use uh, graduated filters, and how to add some film, film like grain. So with the adjustment brush, our goal with the adjustment brush is we just want to uh, subtly make the skin of uh, this this infant here feel a little bit a little bit softer, not quite as harsh or uh, or contrasty. And so I'm just going to uh, open up the adjustment brush and I'm going to uh, make sure that uh, I have the clarity down about uh, eighty percent. You can take it down a lot. I'm going to take whites up about ten blacks down uh, a little bit more than 10 and contrast up just a little bit just to, to make sure it doesn't feel unnaturally soft. And I'm going to make sure that the uh, that my flow and my density are both pretty low. They're, go they're both going to be around 50%. Now I can change the size of my adjustment brush by hitting the bracket keys. And uh, then I'm just going to start uh, filling it in. And I just kind of move quickly. I don't want to stay in one area too long. I'm just kind of uh, penciling it in uh, all around, uh, all around the face. Um, just, just trying to cover all the skin without getting anything else, and uh, again without staying over any one area too long. If you do that, it can start to feel, um, start to feel unnatural. And so I'll just, just keep doing this. Um, this can be a little bit tedious. Uh, you don't actually. Um, want to do this too fast you you, you want to be able to kind of take take your time and go through this and don't be concerned when you do this if you kind of go over an area that you're not supposed to like that um, you can just hit the option key 
and it turns to a negative symbol and you can actually remove where you've been adjusting. All right, so now we've just got the legs left and we'll kind of continue to, to fill that in. Also, uh, don't be worried if some areas look super red. Uh, that's just a function of, um, of it being against a darker part. Okay, so I think that's gonna be pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and uh, just fill in some smaller details here just around that, that finger. I made the adjustment brush smaller by hitting the left bracket key and you can make it bigger by hitting the right bracket key. Okay, all right, that should be pretty good. So to see what we've done, I'm just gonna press the adjustment brush and then I can go back and forth to before and after. And um, I'm just gonna come back in. You can reselect that point and actually make changes to what it is that you've done. I'm just gonna increase the exposure just a tiny bit and try that again. I think that's gonna look nice. That's before, and now that's after. And it feels a little bit softer, but it doesn't feel unnatural, and that's what we're going for. Okay, so we're next, we're just going to try to bring even a little bit more attention um, to the focal point, uh, to this infant in this image. And the way that we're gonna do that is by using these graduated filters to, uh, to make it pop a little bit more. And so uh, we're gonna select the graduated filter, I'm gonna make sure that all this is X'd out and then make the exposure negative 0.3. Just drag up here from the left corner without going over too much of the skin. And that's about right. Okay, now I'll drag up from the top right corner. I'll drag that down without getting too much into the head. And that feels about right. We'll get that angle right there. Okay, and now I'm gonna drag up from the bottom right corner. Um, and I want it to be a little bit darker so I can actually take that the center point and and move that so that um, uh, so that it, it's darker but it doesn't go too much into the skin. Okay, so now let's look at the before and after. That's before and that's after. See how it feels brighter um, but we haven't actually brightened the skin anymore. It's just because the other areas are a little bit darker. All right, so finally, I'm just going to add a little bit of grain. It, with, with some of the fade we have in here, it feels like it should have a little bit of grain, just to even it out. So I'm going to put that at, uh, at 25 for the amount, and then the size I'm going to put about, about 40, about 38, and just zoom up to 100% and uh, give it a second to make sure that it's looking good, and I'm feeling pretty good about that. All right, so here is where we started once again. And after making our changes to uh, tones, to color cast, to color palette, and to the details, here's where we ended up. And if we want to now that we've done this work, we can hit uh, Control C and we can copy these settings. I'm gonna copy um, uh, most everything except for things like local adjustments and noise reduction or exposure and white balance. So I'll copy that. And then uh, we can actually, you know, just paste this by hitting Command V into other images from uh, from the same scene, and we'll get a similar effect. So, just like that, you know, we've we've been able to go from this to this and achieve much more of the uh, image we want. And again, we can always go back, flip back and forth between black and white, and uh, and see what these would look like in black and white by just hitting the V key. So that's it for the four building blocks of style. And uh, in the next section, we'll be talking a little bit more about tone curves and how we go about building those. So I hope that you will stick around for that.